This is the fourth in our communication skills series and this is a continuation from the last one. So do listen to that as well. So let's add to that. Now we all want to communicate with ease and effectiveness, which means we would like to be clear, correct and complete when we relate with others. But how often can we get past our emotional filters to do that? Our experience and memory of the past interactions and our sense of self create the roadblocks we aren't really aware of so often. Most times we are all guilty of hearing what we want to hear and seeing however it appears to us. So here is an enormously powerful communication skill that we can all use whenever there is stress in a relationship. Whether at work or in personal interactions, it helps to bridge the gap between two different attitudes and points of view. And it creates positivity, of course. So we'll call this technique feel, want and willing. You'll see how. It works in this way. First, the two people involved state what they feel. For instance, I say, uh, I feel angry. Uh, I feel unheard. I feel frustrated, etc. You notice that we don't use the word you anywhere. I'm not saying I don't feel that you don't listen to me or I'm frustrated with your behavior or I'm angry with you. I don't use the word you. And now the other person does the same thing. They say what they are feeling, etc. That's the first step. Then they say what they want. I want for us to get better. I want to be happier. I want a stress-free relationship. I want to express myself. Anything, but with the want to. And the partner does the same thing. And the last step is willing. Both say what they are willing to do to get what they want. I'm willing to change myself, I'm willing to accept help or I'm even willing to leave and start again, whatever. Now this takes some practice, but it's so worth it. Remember that everyone denies the feel to some extent. You know, it's so easy to deny whatever you're feeling. And the vast majority of people, they don't even know what they want. And they're not willing to even dream up the willing aspect. Plus, we are all too prone to believe that others know what we are feeling. We are so certain that they are aware of the effect that their actions have on us. And we think that's totally obvious. It is to us. Therefore, it must be true for them. Well, it isn't. Others are just as self-centered as we've ever been. Just as blind to reality as anyone else. They have their own priorities. And even if you happen to be one of them, never assume that you have been seen or heard or accepted as is. So let me give you another example. Uh, say that there is distance that is created in a relationship and it's becoming strained. So you can say, I feel so frustrated and discouraged about what's been happening between us for the last few weeks. I miss the way we used to be fun and spontaneous. And I've been trying to act as if nothing was wrong. But this relationship means so much to me. That's why I feel the way I do. I want it to work, to get better. And I'm willing to do whatever I can to make that happen. 
I am open to suggestions too. And then the other person does the same thing. Let's see another example of bridging the gap after an angry episode. So you can begin with, you know, someone said that silence is the weapon of resentment. That's what I've been doing. I admit it. I've been feeling resentful and I've been avoiding too. That's a waste of time when what I really want is to feel essential and to show how much I care. I really want to do that. I'm willing to admit how resentful I've been and I take responsibility for building the relationship again. Or with a colleague at work, you know, let's say you start with, I feel left out and that makes me feel as though I'm not equal to this project. I really want to understand what the real issue is. I want to feel like we are partners. And I'm willing to make the first move to change whatever I need to. And most of all, I'm willing to hear you out because I like working with you and I like working here. So you see, once you take the reins of responsibility in hand, it's a whole new game plan. And now you have the feel, want and willing skills to capture another's full interest and attention. Even if there's been a major gap in your communication. And did you notice in all these examples, the word you did not appear even once. Because the moment you say you, it sounds like an accusation. Especially when stress is high. So please use this easy yet invaluable skill to first think through your feelings and actions. And then you're capable of approaching another with the right intention and commitment. Good luck. Upwards and onwards, everyone. And see you soon again. That was this week's episode for the Cellular Alchemist podcast with spiritual psychologist Ritu Malhotra. Don't forget to follow the podcast on your listening app so that when the new episode drops, you do not miss out on the chance to change your life by changing your beliefs.